Hey everybody, uh, this is Jim Graham from OptionView Systems. Um, hopefully, uh, Stan started recording now. Uh, I hit the button, Jim. We're good. Okay. And um, today we have Stan Freifeld as a special guest. You know that we um, inter to introduce to our OptionView clients. And Stan works with uh, Mac Mentoring and uh, Macmillan Analytics. Uh, We've known Larry and Stan for many years, decades, and and they certainly know their options. They're well known in the industry, and we've we've gotten their newsletter, the Option Strategist, for decades also. In fact, one of our main products right now, our newest products, the VXX Trading System, was sparked by an idea that Len had read in the Option Strategist newsletter. And so, Stan, I'll let you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, maybe give a little background, and then uh, let's get going. That sounds great, Jim. Thank you very much. Thanks for allowing me to uh, to present to your um, to your group here. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, everybody who's here, I, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, I'm not going to take. Uh, more than probably about an hour of your time, but we have a very interesting topic to uh, to cover. Uh, Jim is going to act. Jim Graham from uh, from Option View is going to act as my wingman, and he's going to answer questions. So you could, if there are questions, you could just type them in, send them to Jim uh, regarding the presentation. If, if there are questions later on, I'm going to give you my contact information. In fact, I, I guess I should put it up now. Let's see. There we go. And uh, so, so you could feel free to send me an email or, or call. Emails typically work better because during the day I'm uh, typically mentoring or trading. Uh, but if you do call, and I love talking to option traders, I will get back to you normally, uh, normally within a day. Okay? Um, so, yeah, so we might as well, well, actually, before we get going, there, there is one thing. Um, that I want to say, and it's kind of a, you know, I call it a sobering thought. When you think about it, um, I, I don't know if, uh, if those who are trading are aware that most people who trade options end up losing money, okay? And I don't know what the right number is. I've heard 80%, I've heard 90%. I don't really know where these statistics even come from, but I know the number is probably pretty high. That's the bad news. The good news is I think I know what it takes to, um, to turn somebody into a successful options trader, and that is uh, you, you have to be more motivated and work harder than the next guy. That, that's what it really takes. And the fact that you're coming to webinars like this um, shows that, that you meet that criteria. The next criteria is that you need good tools. And probably one of the best tools out there, we consider it the Cadillac, is Option View software. And so uh, because I, I know that you're part of the Option View list, perhaps you're already using Option View. If not, I'll show you later how to get a, uh, a demo, not a demo, a, a, a trial. It's actually a 30-day uh, free trial of the software. Um, so that's, that's my second criteria. And the third criteria is really to, to know your business, to, to, to learn options. Um, you know, sometimes I talk to people who tell me they've been trading for years and years, and then when, it, when, when I ask them about... Um, about the theory or the mechanics of trading, I find that they've really been, in my estimation, trading maybe for one year, 15 times over. I'm not denying that they haven't traded that much, but this is a continual uh, experience and of, of learning. And that's what, um, what makes somebody successful. So I, I think the people who, who have come here and others who go through and uh, work hard and have the right tools, and have the right options education can be part of that, whatever it is, 15 or 20 percent who are going to successfully trade successfully uh, and profitably over a long period of time. Okay, 
that's my, uh, my and well, sobering news. I'll just break stuff. in and say that here you have two companies that have each been around for 35 years, Macmillan and OptionView. And between us, access to people who have literally hundreds of years of trading experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly right, Jim. Okay, so here's my contact information, phone number, the email, very easy to remember. My name is Stan, so it's stan at optionstrategist.com. And if you want a copy of the, um, of the slides that I'm going to show you and some other information and some special deals that we have, the website is optionstrategist.com and then forward slash early 17. Early for early exercise and 17 for this great new year. All right, so I'll start out with a disclaimer. The presentation is for education and informational purposes only. It should not be construed as a solicitation to buy or sell options or other securities of any kind. We're not advising or recommending the use of the strategies or techniques described. It, it's totally an educational presentation that I'm doing today. There are multiple risks inherent to options trading that may expose investors and traders to potentially rapid and substantial losses. You agree that Macmillan analysis and option view and Stan Freifeld in particular, right, that, that none of us are liable for any of the trading losses or other consequential damages you may incur. Uh, option trading is not suitable for everyone. Um, and to learn more about it, there's a publication from the uh, Options Clearing Corp. Okay, so with that, let's, uh, let, oh, there, there's one other thing, just so you know, uh, a little bit about me and maybe why you should be listening to what I have to say. Um, if, if you take a, a quick 30 seconds and just, um, I, I won't go through it all. I was a floor trader. That's a picture of me when I had a little bit more hair. Um, but, you you know, I, I have a good background as far as trading um, and, uh, and, and actually teaching options as well. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to move forward. All right, so let's get into the actual presentation. Well, what we're going to talk about is early exercise. It's going to get a little bit technical as we go on, but first uh, I'll just talk about the different types of exercise. We have uh, options that are American style, and that means options can be exercised at any time up until expiration. You buy them today, you could exercise them today, you could exercise them next week, you could exercise them at expiration. Uh, European style options can only be exercised at expiration. Okay, so that's that's kind of important. The, you, you don't have as many rights with European style options as you do with American style options. Settlement, um, that's, that's what happens when you exercise an option. Uh, options settle either to stock or to cash. And I'm, later on I'll, I'll talk about the differences in a little more detail. There's also, uh, at expiration, something called automatic exercise. And what that means is that if your option, put or a call, is in the money by a penny or more, it'll be exercised automatically. So you could be on vacation and uh, you come back Monday morning and you'll, you'll have either long or short stock in your account. Um, or cash, depending on the, the, the type of settlement. Now, it's a relatively new development, this uh, automatic exercise for a penny. When I was trading on the floor of the American Stock Exchange, it was 75 cents. So you could be 75 cents in the money, and if you didn't call your broker and say, I want to exercise my option at expiration, it would expire worthless. You would lose that 75 cents. Um, and unfortunately, that, that was happening to people, and so as time went on, they changed it from 75, it then went to 25 cents, then went to uh, a nickel, and then um, I think in 2010, uh, I'm not exactly sure when, um, I, I guess when isn't very important right now, but it, it went to a penny, and that's where it's been. Obviously, it can't go lower than a penny. You do have the right uh, if to, to not have an, uh, an option exercised uh, if you don't want it to be. Okay, sometimes I get calls, somebody tells me that um, they've been assigned or, or they haven't been assigned when, when the option was in the money by a few cents and they want to know how could that possibly happen. Well, somebody decided they didn't want to exercise. Remember, assignment is the other side of the exercise. 
All right, so let's move on. There's a few things we have to know before we really get to the theory of the early exercise. How do we close a long option position? Well, there, there's really four ways. You could sell the option. You always have the ability to sell an option. It could expire worthless at expiration. You could have automatic exercise at expiration. Remember, we just said if it was a penny in the money, that's what's going to happen, unless you tell your broker not to do it. Or we could early exercise. Remember, if you have uh, long calls, you have the right to buy stock if you exercise the option. And if you have long puts, you have the right to sell stock uh, if you exercise the option. All right, now what about... Uh, a short position. How do we close a short position? Well, you could always buy the option back. It could expire worthless at expiration. You could be assigned at expiration, or you could have an early assignment. And sometimes, uh, if you're not expecting it, that could be a little bit of a surprise. We'll talk later on about if that's good for you or bad for you. Sometimes it, it, it's not always bad. People worry about uh, assignment risk. It's not always a bad thing when you're assigned, but we'll, we'll get into that. If you're short calls, you have an obligation. Let me just see if my pen is working. If you're short calls, you have an obligation to sell stock if you're assigned. And if you're short puts, you have an obligation to buy stock if you're assigned. Okay, this is, you know, this is kind of basic information, I, I hope, for, uh, for most of you listening, right? All right. Uh, another thing that's going to be important to the, uh, to the concept of early exercise um, is how dividends work. And so let me just uh, go through this. Um, there's some information that the company determines that, um, regarding dividends. First, there's a, a declaration date, and that's when the board of directors announces that, that there's going to be a dividend. There's a record date. That's the date in which that you must be a shareholder of record on the company's books to receive that dividend. There's also the payable date. A lot of people think these are the same. The record date and the payable date are the same. They're not. The payable date is when the dividend is actually paid out. And then, of course, the company has to determine uh, the amount of the dividend. In addition to that, there's two other dates that are important um, that are not determined by the company. The first is the ex-dividend date. The ex-dividend date is two business days before the record date. Now, why is that? Well, in, in the U.S., at least in recent times, settlement for stock is um, three days after the trade. It used to be five days. I remember always talking about T plus five settlement. Now it's T plus three. Eventually, it'll probably go to T plus one, but uh, there was always some time for, uh, for some of the administrative issues to be handled regarding the, uh, the clearing of, uh, of trades um, and, and the settlement of trades. So it's two business days before the record date. Uh, that's the day when you have to, when if you, um, the, the stock trades without the dividend on the ex-dividend date. In other words, you have to own the stock on the day prior to the ex-dividend date. We call that date the coom date, and that's the day before the ex-dividend date. So if you own stock on the coom date, you will get the dividend. Uh, um, if you sell it on um, well, let's see. If you own stock on the coom date, you will get you will get the dividend. Um, after that, on the ex dividend date, if you uh, if you buy stock on the ex dividend date, you will not get the dividend. It, it's trading without the dividend on the ex date. Okay. So, uh, and here's a, a note that's um, that we need to know. On the ex dividend date, the stock price decreases by the amount of the dividend. So if you have a stock, just for an example, if you have a stock at 75 and there's a 25 cent dividend, the flat opening price on the ex dividend day is 75 minus 25 cents or 74.75. If the stock opens at 74.75, you would say, gee, that's a, a flat opening. Uh, it's not down 25 cents. And the reason for that is um, to somebody who owned the stock at 75, 
they had $75 worth of equity. On the X date, they're going to have 25 cents as a dividend, even though they, they might not receive it right then, but they, they will be receiving 25 cents as a dividend. Plus, they now have 74.75 uh, in equity. So in total, they still have 75, uh, the, the equivalent of $75. All right. If the stock opened at 75, you, you would say the stock went up 25 cents. Okay, so we, we just have to remember to take out the, the dividend on the X date. All right. Now, what happens when we early exercise uh, an option? Let's take a look at a call. So here we have a stock at 52. X, I, I use X to represent the strike price. Um, the, the, where I got it from is X is for exercise price. Some people, I, I see a lot of uh, other guys use K for strike price, but I, I use X. Anyway, so we're looking at um, a call now that's $2 in the money, and it's got a premium of $2.50. What happens when we exercise this call? Well, we're buying the call for $2.50. DB is for a debit. We exercise it. What does that mean? Well, now we have to buy stock uh, at $50. We buy 100 shares. One call um, represents generally uh, 100 shares of stock. So we're going to have a $5,000 debit. And then if we wanted to right then, we could sell the stock, the 100 shares that we own. Well, where's the stock trading? It's at 52. We sell it at 52. Well, now we're going to have a loss, right? We're going to lo and what does that $50 represent? That's the time premium. $2 of this $250 premium is intrinsic value. $0.50 cents is time premium. We're going to lose that. On the other hand, what if we're assigned? Well, suppose we sold a call for, for the same 250. We're the other side of this trade. Um, we're then assigned. We're now short stock, right? We're going to receive a credit of $5,000, but we're, real, we're short stock now. We could buy the stock back, close out the position, and we're going to have a $50 gain. So what, we're, what, what one side is losing by exercising, they're losing their time premium. The other side, the side that's assigned, is gaining that time premium. Okay? All right. What about puts? How, uh, we, we have the same concept, but the numbers are uh, slightly different. So now let's look at a stock at 47. Strike is 50. And uh, the, the put is 325. So $3 is time premium, 50 cents is the, um, I'm sorry, $3 is the intrinsic value and $0.25 cents is the time premium. So we buy the put. It costs $325. It's a debit. We exercise. Now what's going to happen? We're going, when we exercise a put, we sell stock. When we sell stock, we're going to be short or, uh, or we'll actually sell stock if, if we have it. Uh, if we don't, we'll be short stock. We'll receive a $5,000 credit. And then to close out the position, we could buy the stock back at 47 where it's trading. And so net, if you add these up, we're going to have a $25 loss. Again, representing the time premium in the, uh, in the put. On the other hand, what we, we, we have the opposite going on with the, um, with the assignment. We sell a put. Well, a lot of people like to, uh, to sell puts. We're, we're short a put for $325, which is a credit. We're assigned on that put, meaning we have to buy stock. When you're assigned on a put, you have to buy stock. So we'd have to buy 100 shares at the strike price of 50. That's a $5,000 debit. And now we're long stock. If we then go to sell the stock out, we'll sell it at $4,700. We'll get this amount of credit. That's where the stock is trading, and that'll give us a $25 gain. All right, so we're gaining the time premium. This is what actually happens when we, um, when we exercise, which we have the right to do, or if we're assigned, which, we, which could happen to us um, because we have an obligation. Okay? All right, so we're going to go through the early exercise of calls first, and for that we need uh, we need some definitions so I'm going to use these uh, I'll define these variables as follows C is for call uh, 
where that come from? C is for call. S is for stock. D is for dividend. I is for cost of carry. Now, what is cost of carry? Cost of carry is the, uh, the strike price times the risk-free rate. And just um, the risk-free rate right now is very low. We're going to, we'll, we'll look at that, we'll examine that a little more uh, in a few minutes. But I happen to use now half of 1%. Until recently, I was using 15 basis points. Now I'm using 50 basis points, but still very low. Um, and, and that will have an impact on, on early exercise. And T is the amount of time to expiration. Uh, not to an X date or, or anything else, to expiration from today to expiration. Uh, and it's always expressed in years. Okay, so uh, if it's uh, one month, it would be one month divided by 12 or 1 12th. If it's 30 days, it could take 30 divided by 365. But this has to be in years. And P is equal to the corresponding put, meaning the put at the same strike as the call. All right, so now we have our basic definitions. And I put this together, um, this concept, actually when I was on the floor back in uh, around 2000. And it's interesting because the result I'm going to come up with is relatively well known. But I don't think, well, I know I haven't seen it presented quite like this. Um, so you might find this interesting, the, the derivation that I have here. So I'm going to say I'm starting out with no position. What is my no position? My no position is equal to uh, being long a call and short a call. So together, the, the, the same call. So I'm long the call, I'm short the call, I have no position. Okay, that's where we're starting from. Then I'm going to say, well, this is what I'm trying to figure out. If I exercise my long call, when does it give my position, which was equal to zero, it had no value, right? Uh, when will it give my position some positive value? When will it make the position greater than zero? Well, um, we should all be familiar with synthetics. And when we exercise, well, we'll, we'll get to the, I'm sorry, uh, we'll, we'll get to the synthetics in a minute. We should be familiar with them. Uh, anyway, but what happens when we exercise a call? That's what this term is here. When we exercise a call, we get stock, we get the dividend, but we have to pay to carry this stock from now to expiration. Right? Now we're going to use the synthetics. Okay. Well, first, uh, I, I rearranged this equation. Uh, uh, I don't know if I told you that you're going to need to know a little bit of algebra to be able to uh, to go through this, but it's real real simple, uh, basic algebra. So here we have uh, the same equation, just rearranged. I just brought the minus c over here, uh, so you could see the s minus c together. Well, for those who are familiar with synthetics, what do we actually have? Long stock and a short call. We know that to be a short put, right? Uh, and what does that mean? Well, it means that um, the gain or loss in, in this position, stock and long stock and short call, is going to be the same as the gain or loss in this position, just a short put. Now, that's, th this is really important to understand. If you're not familiar with it, um, you, you should... Uh, you should become familiar with it, okay? And there's lots of ways you could uh, become familiar with these types of relationships. But anyway, the percentage gain or loss will be different between the two, but the dollar amount of the gain or loss uh, should be the same, okay? All right, so now we have short the put plus the dividend minus the cost of carry um, is greater than zero. And if we rearrange it, uh, I just bring the put over to the right side of the equation. And our resultant formula tells me that D minus I, the dividend minus the cost of carry, is greater than the put. And what it's saying is, if the dividend minus carry is greater than the put, then I've created some value by exercising my call. All right, now, um, 
let's, let's take a look at what, what's actually going on here. So here I have a time diagram. Um, today, let's say it's time zero, and we're going out to expiration. And there's a dividend. Now, this dividend is here from, from time zero up until the coom date, right? The stock trades with the dividend up until the coom date. On the X date and up until expiration, the stock trades without the dividend. Okay, so for an exercise to make sense, we just said the dividend minus the cost of carry has to be greater than the put. Well, I think you see this coming, but what if there's no, the first thing, well, what if there's no dividend? Well, let's, let's see. If there's no dividend, it's telling you, you really, you shouldn't exercise. Okay, because it's saying that minus I minus the cost of carry is greater than the put. Now the put, what do we look at in the put? Well, we already know that we're going to lose any time premium. So we want there to be very, very little time premium in the call. And if there's very little time premium in the call, there's going to be very little time premium, if any, in the put. The put might be, uh, who knows, zero off it, at, uh, off it at a nickel, something, or a nickel off it at 10 cents. But it's going to be a very low number to begin with. But anyway, we want the dividend minus the carry to be greater than that. And if there's no dividend, that can't happen. So um, there are ways of getting out of the position. We saw that already. But early exercise is not, uh, not, not the best way to go. All right. Now, if there is a dividend, what do we do then? Well, we really only have to check it on the coon date because we want the dividend minus the cost of carry to be greater than the put. When will this be have the greatest value? Well, D is going to be the same from time zero up until the coom date, but the cost of and so the cost of carry um, is going to be decreasing every day. So we want the dividend to be as much as possible. That would be over here, and the cost of carry to be as great as possible, that would be over here, right? It, actually, th this would have the greatest cost of carry, but we want the dividend and the cost of carry both, um, we want that difference to be uh, as great as possible. And that's going to happen on the coom date. So when you're long a call that's in the money, and probably deep in the money, um, but also sometimes uh, calls that aren't so deep in the money if the dividend is large, uh, we only really have to check on the on the coom date. Okay, all right. Let's let's do the same kind of thing now uh, for puts. So P for puts, S for stock, D is the dividend, I cost of carry, and C now is the call. And we'll go through it kind of the same way. And then we'll we'll, we'll see what this all means. So we have. Uh, I'm starting out with no position. P minus P, right? No position here. And I want to find out when I exercise the put, uh, when, it will, when it will give positive value to my position. Okay, that's, that's what we're trying to figure out here. So when I exercise the put, what happens? Well, uh, I'm short, I get short stock. Um, I now have, uh, I, I receive interest, but I now have to pay the dividend. Right, uh, that that's something you, you should be aware of. If you short stock, you have to pay the dividend. Um, I I wasn't always aware when I first started trading. Uh, I wasn't aware of that, and um, I, I I was trading Dupont on the floor, and um, I was short a significant amount of stock, and I found out uh, about three weeks later on the payable date that there was a, a pretty large debit to my position, and at the time. Um, the markings as to what that what that debit represented were not very clear, so I called the the clearing firm and said, you know, what what's this uh, amount coming out of my account? What, what's this? Uh, why, why are you taking this money from my account? And I said, oh, weren't you short? You know, whatever it was, ten thousand shares of stock. And then I, I realized what was going on. I said, oh, you're right. I forgot about. I kind of covered myself pretty quickly. Uh, but but it's something that, um, that that you really have to know, you, or, or else you'll you'll be in for a surprise like I was. But anyway, all right. So here we are now. Uh, let's see what 
the next step is, well, again, I'm just rearranging the terms a little bit. I'm bringing the short put over here. Short stock, short put. Synthetically, what is that? Well, we're familiar, right? It's a, it's a short call. So now the short call plus cost of carry minus the dividend, we want that to be greater than zero. And that's our, our form. I'm just going to bring the C over to the right side of the equation. So the resultant formula now is that cost of carry minus the dividend has to be greater than the call uh, for, the, uh, for the exercise to bring positive value to our position. Okay, so how do we analyze that one? Well, again, here's our, our time diagram. And we already figured out what the equation is. For, for the exercise to make sense, we want the cost of carry minus the dividend to be greater than the call. Now, if there's no dividend, what do we have to do? Well, we, if this term here is zero, we, it, it could always be possible that the cost of carry is greater than the call. So in a sense, you really always need to check. Now, do you re does, does that mean every time you buy a put, do you're, you, you have to think about it every day? Should I exercise? Should I exercise? Well, um, I don't think so. It, it, it's only when we're deep in the money. And remember, the, uh, we, we want the time premium in the put to be, very, uh, to be very small. So this is really for deep in the money options. Um, and you'll see in, in, in a few minutes about the, uh, the impact of interest, because we're in a very low interest environment now. But anyway, uh, theoretically, we, we kind of need to check it on a consistent basis when, there's, uh, when there is no dividend. Now, what about when there is a dividend? If there is a dividend, then when we want to check is on the ex-dividend date, because we don't... When there's a dividend, that's going to hurt this I minus D. So if there, if there is a dividend, when we want to check is when there is no dividend, which would be on the X date. But then if it says don't exercise at that point, it doesn't meet our criteria, well, then the next day we still don't have a dividend, and uh, we, you know, it, it brings us back to number two. Right, so we checked. It said uh, don't exercise, don't early exercise. Then we go back to to two. Well, there's no dividend now. Uh, if we're still uh, in the money, well, we, you know, we we have to check. We don't want to give up anything. You know, uh, this is a very competitive business that we're in, and everybody's trying to take your money when you're trading. So we don't want to give up anything. We want to use every tool that we have. All right, so let's talk about the impact of the risk-free interest rate on early exercise. We already know when to do it, right? Um, we're going to exercise on the Coombe date, but here's an example. Let's see, let's see if we could figure out if we should or should not early exercise. So we have a stock at 60. We're looking at the, uh, the 50 strike call. Uh, that, and you can see that's pretty deep in the money, right? The dividend is 20 cents. Um, I said there's 30 days to go, and the put is zero or, uh, or a nickel. And we typically look at the bid price on the put. I don't, um, I don't know if I said that before. All right, so the put is a, a nickel bid, where, where we could sell it if, if, we, um, if, if we wanted to. That's, that's where we're going to look for doing our testing. All right, so... Well, when I put this together originally, uh, like I said, I was using a 15 basis point um, basis points interest rate. So the interest rate was 0.15. Um, now I'm, I'm using 0.50. But let's see what would happen. It wouldn't change the uh, the answer here anyway. But we calculate the cost of carry. So it's the strike price, the 50, times the risk-free rate, 15 basis points, 0.0015 times the amount of time. So one month is 30 days over 365 days. You multiply that out, it's equal to a penny. <clears throat> and so the dividend minus the cost of carry is 19 cents. Now remember, what are we comparing it to? Well, we're, we're comparing it to the, div, to, the, to the put, right? Puts zero or a nickel. Okay, if, so, the, so in this case, uh, 19 cents is 
significantly greater than, than zero or a nickel, uh, we're going to exercise. So this would be an exercise, even though we're 30 days out. All right, what if the interest rate was 6%? Well, we calculate the cost of carry. Now the cost of carry is a quarter. And so the dividend, the dividend was 20 cents. Dividend minus 25 is negative 5 cents. We don't exercise. So this would be an exercise, this would not. And what you could see here, calls are more likely, likely to be exercised in a low versus a high interest environment. For puts, it, it, it's kind of the opposite. Puts are less likely to be exercised in a low versus a high interest environment. Okay? These, these are the, the, the rules that we're going to use, but we actually have to do the calculations, which, as you could see, are, are you know, very, uh, very straightforward. Okay? What about the time to expiration? We just looked at one there. There were 30 days to go. Well, here we'll, we'll do a comparison. So now I'm looking at um, the, the stock at, is at 60, uh, the strike is 50, the dividend's 20 cents, and now we're looking at a risk-free rate of 6%, and uh, the put, again, is zero or, or a nickel, something like that. If, if we're going to compare uh, time to expiration of seven days versus 30 days. All right, so if there are seven days to go, then the cost of carry comes out to 0.06, and dividend minus carry is 14 cents. Well, 14 is greater than even a nickel, right? So this is an exercise. On the other hand, if we had 30 days to go here, well, we, we already did this calculation. We, we see that the uh, cost of carry is a nick, uh, 25 cents, and so 25 minus, um, I'm sorry, 20 cents minus 25 is equal to negative 5 cents, and we don't exercise. So near-term calls are more likely to be exercised than far-term calls. Near-term puts are less likely to be exercised than far-term puts. Okay? So that's why, you know, if you look at an options chain, you're looking at um, some deep-in-the-money puts, perhaps, that go out for a significant period of time, you'll see that there's not too many deep-in-the-money puts. There might be a significant number of deep-in-the-money calls, but there's not going to be too many deep-in-the-money puts. And if there are, I'll tell you right now that it's public holding those, uh, holding those puts because a, a market maker would, would know uh, to exercise if, uh, you know, the, a market maker would know these rules. Okay. So now, um, why would somebody not early exercise when the calculations say that they should? Now, I'm asking this question um, and because this comes up when I teach dividend spreads, uh, which we're not going to talk about today, but this question comes up a lot uh, because the, the concept of a dividend spread is to take advantage of the fact that some people will not early exercise when they should. Okay, so why, let, let's come up with some reasons, and they're not great reasons, but I'll, I'll put them up. First, they don't know the criteria. They, uh, let's say they, they didn't, did not attend uh, today's webinar. Okay, they, they don't know it. Uh, they don't have the capital. They're afraid that uh, they, they can't exercise their, their calls uh, because they can't, uh, they, they can't buy, they can't support the purchase of stock. They're not aware of the dividend. Nowadays, um, a lot of the brokers are telling, um, telling their customers that a dividend is coming up. So they're, they're trying to, to help you. Um, but you should be, you know, traders that are serious ab about uh, trading options, you, you should be aware um, when, when the X date is and, and the amount of the dividend. Um, you should also be aware of any earnings dates that are coming up. That's not related to this necessarily, but just some extra information. Uh, how about people forget? And you might think, gee, that's, uh, that really doesn't happen. Uh, trust me, uh, that does happen. People, they, they know about it. They know it when the X date is. And they just forget to call their broker. They're doing something else, um, and they don't do it. Some, uh, what, what I've heard, and these are reasons I've heard from people. 
that they've already made a profit. And what I mean by that is you buy a, let, let's say you buy a call for $2 and now it's trading at 5 And so you, you have a nice profit in that call. And there's maybe a, I don't know, a 25 cent dividend, something like that. And you say, well, you know, it's just not worth it to me. I'm, I'm making a lot of money on this trade already. Uh, I'm not going to worry about uh, another 25 cents. Now, to me, that reasoning doesn't make any sense, but that's, you know, some people uh, think that way. Those are the people I want to trade against, by the way. Um, how, what about commissions and expenses? Um, obviously, if the commissions and expenses exceed the, um, the amount that you're going to make by uh, virtue of the early exercise, well, then, then you wouldn't do it. Um, but nowadays, commissions and expenses are relatively low, right? Uh, they used to be a very, very expensive, but now they're not too bad. All right. Now, this, um, I, I hear this one uh, a lot. It's part of a spread. So you're afraid to early exercise, um, let's say, a, a call spread um, because you're going to mess up the um, the spread that you currently have on, you're going to change it from an option, a, a long option, let's say a long call, you're going to change it from a long call to stock. Well, what's, what's the big deal about doing that? The option that you have, the call, is probably very close to 100 deltas to begin with. It's a, uh, an in-the-money, probably deep-in-the-money uh, call, and you're replacing it with with stock, which is also uh, deep in the money, if you think about it, that you know, I think of stock as really an option, uh, a zero strike, infinite time period um, option. But so, uh, but but stock is a hundred deltas, right? The same as a, a very deep in the money call. And if the call was uh, ninety-five deltas and ninety-eight deltas, and and you ended up with a hundred deltas, that's not going to make much of a difference. And the next day, you could always reverse it. You know, sell out your stock and buy the um, uh, buy the option back if if you feel more comfortable with that. Okay, and then um, you know the the gain from from exercising is small. If you if you just, you might just say it's not worth it to me to go through the uh, the hassle of uh, of early exercising and then the, the next day maybe I want to uh, get my option back and get you know sell out the stock. I'm assuming calls, so we'd be selling out the stock. Uh, and then selling, uh, and then buying, uh, buying a call. You might just say it's not worth it. And that, you know, to my way of thinking, that might be the only reason that, uh, you know, for someone that really makes sense. Uh, I, I guess also, you know, if the commissions and expenses make it very close, uh, these are almost the same uh, same reason. Um, but you really should. The, none of these reasons really, as far as I'm concerned, uh, should prevent you from early exercise. Now, you hear a lot about the assignment risk, and um, if you know when to exercise, if you're long, then you should also know when, you're, when to expect to be assigned if you're short. Now, sometimes uh, you'll be assigned when you're not expecting it because the other side doesn't know the, the right thing to do. Or you might not be assigned when you're expecting to be assigned. But those are all good things. All right. Now, part of the, I guess, uh, why people think of this as, as a real risk is because um, you don't find out about the assignment until the next day. And therefore, you, you might have to take some immediate a action. But just like with the, uh, the call issue, uh, and when I say immediate actions, it's because of you know, your account might not be large enough to support the uh, the exercise. Well, I'm sorry, well, well, might not be large enough to support the assignment in, in this case, the, the exercise that, uh, that the other side did and you're being assigned. It's really not that much of a risk, though, um, because for the same reason that, that we didn't worry about it from the long side, the option was deep in the money and the delta was close to 100, and now you're replacing it by stock. So, you know, it's really not a big deal. The, the biggest part about this is perhaps the margin issue, and your broker's not going to be upset. They know that this could happen, but you have to unwind it quickly. And that's, 
but your, your broker will let you know about it. Um, unless, of course, if you have enough, uh, enough capital in your account, it, it might not even be an issue. Um, but, but that's why I think people worry or are concerned about it, at least. Uh, if you are assigned and not expecting to be, I, I already said that, that's usually something that's good for you. And the position could always be reversed for a relatively small cost. Remember, you're, um, you're, you're doing a stock and option transaction. If, if you do them together as a, uh, a spread type transaction, the market makers will probably um, do it for you, you know, with, uh, w without looking for too much edge in it from, from their perspective. Uh, there, there will be some commissions and uh, expenses like that. All right. Now, what is the real assignment risk? And, and this is kind of important. Um, if part of a spread has cash settled American style options, then you, you might have a real assignment risk. Now, the two, uh, I'm aware of two indexes that are, uh, Ameri that are American style and cash settled. One is OEX, and I'm going to use that as an example here. The other, I think, is um, SOX, the um, Philadelphia semi Semiconductor uh, Index. doesn't trade all that much, but uh, it's one of very few. There might be one or two others. Uh, there, there's not a lot. Remember, American-style cash settlement. All right, so here's, here's a scenario. Traders long the, um, well, OEX is at 8.95. You're long the 8.65, 8.90 call vertical. Now, what hap what, what's the delta of cash? I, I typically ask this to, uh, to students I'm working with. Lots of times they'll say 100. Well, no. Um, the delta of cash is zero. Delta, cash doesn't have a delta. The, the example I use is you have $1,000 in the bank and, and IBM goes up a dollar. How much money do you have in the bank now? Well, you still have $1,000. It doesn't impact. Uh, the fact that IBM or, or whatever went up doesn't impact the cash that you have in a bank or under your mattress if, uh, if that's how you keep your cash. All right. If you're so here we have the 865, 890 vertical. If you're assigned on the 890s, the positions then, and so we're, we're long the, uh, the 865s, so we're short the 890s. We're assigned on the 890s, and we're, long the eight, we're still long the 865 calls. Well, if OEX tanks the next day, the calls that you're, that you're long are going to fall, right? And the dollars aren't providing any kind of a hedge. Now, this was, OEX used to be um, one of the most popular trading vehicles um, uh, at, at the CBOE. It, it's not, not so much anymore. Um, now everybody trades SP, or a lot of people trade SPX. But it was realized that this could be a real problem. And so they issue the, um, um, uh, the CBOE came out with XEO. It, you can see it's the opposite. OEX, by the way, stands for Option Exchange. I mean, that's how popular it was. When, uh, when they made up the symbol. But XEO is the same, it, it trades, it's the same um, S&P 100 index, but it's, uh, and it's still cash settled, but it's European style, okay? So if you're doing spreads, uh, you might be better off um, using XEO as opposed to OEX. You, do, you, you eliminate this assignment risk. This is a real risk. Okay. Oh, now I, I have a story. Um, this is a, a trading disaster. I've actually made it better than it really was, to be honest with you, and I've made it smaller than it really was. Um, I had uh, a, a student who came to us. He, he wasn't a student, but someone came to us, and then he became a student because he lost a, a lot of money on this trade. And so I, I just want you to be aware of, uh, of what to look for. So think about this. On a Friday, we had stock, and uh, I'm not going to say it was SPY, uh, you know, but maybe it was. But we had some stock, it was a 183, and the trader bought 100 of the 181, 182 call spreads for 90 cents, expiring the next week. So it was a one week. He's, um, he's risking, really, 90 cents to make 10 cents. 
Okay, and he thought it was, you know, he thought the risk was worthwhile. Now remember, the stock was above the high strike to begin with, and he thought it was going up. Okay, on the following Thursday, so he put it on on Friday, we get to the next Thursday, the stock goes ex-dividend for 85 cents. The next day, on Friday, the trader finds out he was assigned on the 182 calls the ones that he was short, right? He's short, he's long the 181, short the 182s. Well, on that expiration Friday, the stock went out at 185, and so he ended up exercising the 181 calls. Now, think about this, I'll, you know, I'll, um, uh, I'll wait 30 seconds or so, just think about this, uh, I'll take a drink of water, and ignoring commissions and exercise and, and any other fees, assignment fees, how much money do you think this trader made or lost on this trade? Okay, um, let, let's just think about that a little bit and then we'll see on the next slide. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's take a look. The cost of the trade was $9,000, right? The trader was hoping that the stock would stay above 182 at expiration, you know, a week later at expiration, and he would end up making 10 cents, right? He, he paid 90 cents for a $1 vertical. He'd make 10 cents on it, um, or $10 100 times. He'd make $1,000. He's risking 9,000. So you might question that, but he was very sure what was going to happen with, um, with, with the stock. All right? He was not aware of the dividend. He was not aware of that dividend. And so being assigned, he had to pay out the dividend. It cost him 80, that cost him 8,500. Netting that against the thousand he did make, because it was above 182 at expiration, so he did make that, that, that 10 cents. He made that thousand dollars, but his net loss was $7,500. That is a bad trade. And the, the truth is that the, the actual trade was um, significantly bigger than what I'm showing here. Okay. Now, could, he, could, could we avoid, could, could he have avoided that particular trade? Well, the answer is yes. He could have if he knew, um, if, if he knew that there was a dividend. So he could have taken the position off um, before the X date, or he could have exercised the ones he was long, the 181s, right? But when he found out about the assignment on Thursday, I, I think before I said he found out about it Friday, he found out about it on Thursday. Once he found out about it, there was nothing he could do at that point. And, you know, quote, his, uh, his fate was sealed. So just be careful about uh, exercising, uh, you know, early exercises, early assignments, uh, when, when there are significant dividends like that. All right. So some final thoughts. Uh, for, for long call options, we only need to check for early exercise on the Coombe date. I showed you how uh, we, we developed a formula as to um, a criteria for determining if we should early exercise or not. But we only have to check it on really uh, one day. Okay. For long puts, we, we really need to check for early exercise after the ex-dividend date. Now, of course, if there's no ex-dividend date, well, then we, we have to check a little bit more often for, uh, for deep in the money puts. In the money, short options can be assigned at any time. Me, and what I mean by this is even if uh, the rules that we just develop tell you not to early exercise, somebody else might not know what these rules are, and they might not know how to make the proper determination. They might think it makes sense to, to exercise. They might not realize that maybe just selling the option out uh, is a better way to close it if, if that's what they're looking to do. So, um, so you, you might be assigned even though you, you, know, you, you think you shouldn't be. This says in the money short options can be assigned at any time. Let me tell you something doesn't, well, it's happened to me at least once, but I, I think it might have happened twice where I've been assigned 
on options that were out of the money. And that really, not at, uh, not at expiration, you could almost understand that a little bit if it's a, a penny or two out of the money at expiration, but somebody wants to either short or, or get long stock. But it does, because they're expecting something over the weekend, but, but it doesn't make, well, to my way of thinking, it doesn't make a lot of sense uh, if it happens uh, early to be assigned on out-of-the-money options early. So, uh, and then be very careful if you're doing spreads with cash settled American style options, OEX, um, or, you know, the SOX, SOX. Uh, and you may, you may want to consider XEO in that case instead of OEX. I don't think um, SOX has uh, an Ameri uh, um, a European style expiration uh, equivalent. But I don't think they do. Okay, so that's that's most of what I, I wanted to tell you. I just wanted, if you have a couple of minutes, just wanted to tell you a little about uh, Macmillan Analysis Corp. We provide a, a lot of products and services. We have trade advisories. Um, we have three, actually, three different uh, trade advisories. We do money management. For those who don't want to manage money by themselves, they want some help. Uh, we do that. We do it through individual accounts, by the way. So um, somebody else's account can't blow up your account. Actually, these accounts um, are through interactive brokers, and uh, we, we only get the ability to, to make trades within the accounts. We can't, we can't take money out. We do that all for, for your safety. In fact, when the program was first being set up, uh, the name Bernie Madoff was around, and everybody was very concerned about the safety of, of having somebody manage their money. And so we put in a lot of safeguards for that, uh, for that reason. We have educational materials. We have software products. Um, I do consulting to institutions, hedge funds, and individuals. Uh, the, my, um, the most exciting thing, or what, what I like doing probably the most, is the one-on-one -on -one mentoring program that I started uh, about 11 years ago. And um, if you want to find out more about that or, or any of these uh, things, you could come to our website. You could call me. Uh, I gave you the contact information. Here it is again. My name, Stan Freifeld. Here's my phone number, direct line to me. Um, we also have some discounted specials for, uh, for anyone listening to, uh, to the webinar. You could just go to our website, optionstrategist.com, and then put a forward slash 17. You'll, you'll get a copy of, this, um, uh, of the PDF file uh, if, if you want it. And um, probably a lot of you are already, um, already using Option View, but if you're not, you could get a, a free, totally free, you don't even need a credit card, a 30-day trial subscription. Uh, it's the full program uh, to, uh, of Option View, and you could just go to our website, um, uh, or I'm sorry, go to optionview.com and put in uh, Macmillan, which is from our website, Macmillan here and uh, give it a shot. See, see if, uh, if it works for you. It's a tremendous program. I told you already, we consider it a Cadillac product. Um, so, uh, so check it out. And then, um, let's see, if you're interested in the one-on-one -on -one mentoring program, uh, you, you could go to our site, optionstrategist.com, and put mentor and go forward slash mentoring, or call me directly. Um, Again, that's my number. And then finally, uh, sometimes I, I end up getting a lot of questions about the brain teasers at the front. If you came in early, I had some brain teasers. It's two and three quarters. Um, the time would be 2.30, and uh, the person you're talking to would be, uh, would be your mother. So you could call her mom. Okay? So I want to thank everybody for listening. Here's my, uh, my contact information. I'll leave it up for a few minutes. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to send them in. I, I wasn't uh, watching the question box, um, but I, I'm sure Jim took care of uh, ones that, that might have come in. But if you're thinking about the early exercise and you have questions about it, feel free to send me an email uh, or a phone call. Okay? So, again, thank you all very much for attending. I really appreciate it. Have a good night. All right. Thanks, Bye -bye. Dan. Yeah. It's a pleasure, Jim. Thank you for allowing me to, uh, yeah. to, to talk to your group.
Yeah, and people, uh, I think, always like to hear stories, too. Um, I remember in the old days, it was more for talking about after work. And nowadays, with uh, computers and everyone sitting in their own little office, it's uh, not as much interaction anymore. So people like to hear a story about other traders and what happens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it could keep you from making mistakes uh, on, on your own uh, later on, sure. All right, well, we really appreciate it, and as I said, uh, we've used uh, Larry McMillan and the Option Strategist products for years, so, so yeah, make sure you check it out. I, I personally think everyone should be reading uh, his Option Strategist newsletter. It gives you information that you don't really see anywhere else in that format. Very good. And uh, thanks so much for uh, joining us, and uh, yeah, we always love working with McMillan. Uh, thanks, Jim. It's been right. a pleasure. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Right. Bye. Night. Bye.